Pile Meadow Mountain, man. It is Saturday, June the 11th. And if I'm not mistaken, it was right at two weeks ago I made a video about Catawba worms. And I said I would make a part two, part three, you know, follow them along in their, uh, in their life cycle. Awesome, awesome. Brim and catfish bait. And that's what I'm here to do, uh, to do today is to film a part two. Uh, never heard of me. Go by Palmetto Mountain Man. If you haven't heard of me, that's cool. Uh, look, at a look at a couple of videos of mine. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, give me a like. Leave a comment. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Tell me what I'm doing right. Uh, all comments uh, are appreciated. Uh, enough of that. Uh, I said in the first video, Catawba worms, they would be here in the next couple of weeks, and I was honest. I didn't know whether it'd be one week or whether it'd be an entire month, but I do want to show you. Uh, out on the side of my barn, four or five days ago, I seen the Catawba moth. Yeah, I don't know. It's, from what I've seen, they're, they're grayish brown, probably an inch and a half in length. The wingspan's probably two and a half, three inches. I saw that moth on the side of my barn, and I said, well, good. They're in the area. I'll have them soon. Well, I come out here uh, this morning, and I want to show you what they look like. And there they are. I hope it comes into focus. That is a small cluster, and you see them on the end of that leaf. Uh, here we go. Wanted to show you this. There we go. There's some more. Oh, yeah. Look. Hope you can see. It's so hard to film something so small. But there you go. And that is what is left of the leaf. There they are. The moth will lay eggs on the bottom side of a leaf. Bottom side of a leaf uh, protects them from the sun, protects them from getting washed off. They'll hatch on the bottom side of that leaf, and they are voracious eaters. Here we go. And they will completely annihilate a leaf. When they get through with that leaf, they'll climb down the stem of it and go to a different leaf. And they will eat, eat, eat uh, through their entire life cycle. When they're fully mature, they'll be uh, probably as long as your middle finger and probably sometimes as big around diameter as your pinky. Well, I've got them on this Catawba tree. And I also have, yep. I've got them on this Catawba tree. And as you can see, they eat from the underside to where there's nothing left on the leaf. They'll do that their entire life cycle. Uh, their life cycle, you know, from the very beginning as, a, as you see them as a small pencil-led caterpillar until they're very large, large, that you actually fish with, I don't know, 10, 14 days. I have seen them go from absolutely nothing to huge in seven, and I have seen them be out here, I believe, a little over two weeks. Uh, what I want, yeah, there's more on this one. There we go. They're on all three Catawba trees. I uh, did want to show this and share this. This is my tallest one. As you can see, there's a the trunk. That one's a little shorter, and that one's even shorter than that. What you want to do with a Catawba tree when they are in your yard is you want to keep them... Some people keep them shorter than I do. But I do like to have somewhat of a trunk because I would like to keep the weeds and everything else away from the base. Keeps more insects, uh, less chance of fire ants building mounds. You know, I don't want a Catawba tree that is four foot tall and six foot across uh, with uh, limbs that are coming one foot off of the base because I don't want it to be uh, shady uh, for fire ant mounds to develop and everything else. What I like to do is keep them six, eight foot tall in the winter, dead of winter. I'll come out there, as you can see, and I'll cut these limbs off. And what that does when you cut the limbs off is it makes them bush back out. A lot of trees, and Catawbas are that way to an extent, but a, a lot of trees, as you trim limbs, uh, on the lower part, it makes them want to grow upward. Well, that's true on every tree, but Catawbas, if you keep the top, as you see here, uh, cut down in the winter, they'll sprout out in the, in the spring, summer, whatever, with more of a bush than a tree. Well, number one, the more of a bush it is, 
uh, the more leaves you have. The more leaves you have, if you have a small uh, hatching or a hatchling or a group, however you want to word it, if you have a, a, a small number of Catawba worms, they've got plenty to eat and they'll stay longer. If you happen to have a large group of Catawbas that have hatched on your tree and you've got more leaves, well, you've got more Catawba worms to feed. Uh, that's the theory behind that. The other theory is, is I really don't care to pull out a six or an eight foot ladder to stand halfway or even on top of it to pick Catawba worms. If you keep them pruned down six, eight foot tall, they're going to bush out every year and you can actually stand flat footed and, uh, and pick them off the tree. But, uh, yeah, I've got a good many that have shot up, but, uh, just wanted to give you an idea of how big they are now. And uh, here we go. This is one I showed earlier, but I, I, I hope it shows better. Uh, right now, they are yellow with black dots. I don't know why they do it. But as they mature, they will get a darker uh, yellow, almost uh, lemon colored. And they will get a pronounced uh, black stripe down the back of them. Uh, there's probably, I don't know, 10 to 12 on that leaf. And there's the end of my pinky finger. Uh, they will get huge over, over the next week. Uh, it is Saturday, yeah, Saturday, June the 11th. I'll try to make a part three come this Wednesday or Thursday and show you how far they have come along. But I just wanted to share a part two. Hope you liked it. Hope you enjoyed it. First time viewer, hope you subscribe. Talk to y'all later.